I'm Murray Carter. This is my personal kitchen knife, which I forged and I use every day in my kitchen. Here's a really thick magazine, more than 100 pages. And boom, we cut the corner right off of that. The reason why we're able to do that is because the secondary edge of this blade is really, really thin and uh, the primary edge is sharpened very acutely. This is a hand forged water quenched Japanese laminated blade. It's got a white steel core, which is roughly 1.4% carbon forged and water quenched, resulting in uh, around Rockwell 64 as tempered. Now, when you or when a person has a blade that is ground so thinly, the blades can also be susceptible to chipping. You know, combination of really thin edge geometry and really high Rockwell hardness in the steel. If your blade does chip, you need to consider why the blade might have chipped. And generally speaking, there are three things that can cause a blade to chip. Uh, number one is large grain size inside the steel. That it happens if the blade is overheated at some time during the forging, annealing, or quenching process. The second reason why a blade can chip is uh, even though the blade might have fine grain structure and it was never overheated uh, and quenched properly, but just wasn't adequately tempered, so it's in the higher echelons of the Rockwell hardness, you know, 66, 67, and just the steel is just a little bit too brittle. The third reason why a blade might chip is it might have really fine grain structure, you know, forged, annealed, and quenched at the perfect low temperatures and good fine grain, uh, and then was tempered properly, but just too thin for the task that you're asking the blade to perform. The most obvious uh, example there would be trying to cut a tree down with a really thin straight razor blade. I mean, the, the blade could be the best steel in the world, but it's going to fail and, and crack and crumble if you try to abuse it like that. So, if your blade chips, we need to discern, you know, what was the cause. So one thing that I'm uh, prone to do when I get a knife back into my shop that has chipped, whether it's one of my knives or whether it's uh, somebody else's knives, because we sharpen everybody's knives, is uh, I'll pull out a lighter out of my pocket. This is a Zippo lighter. It's got some round corners here. I'll put my uh, glasses on for safety. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try to flex the edge by pushing this edge down at about, I've got it all holding it to about a 30 degree angle to the corner of my Zippo lighter here. And I'm going to push it down and I'm going to try to deflect the edge. And what I want to see is I want to see that steel ripple away from the pressure of the Zippo lighter. And then when I remove the pressure from the lighter, I want to see the steel go right back to where it was before. So it's kind of flexible like a spring. If, when I push on that edge, the edge stays bent, then that usually means that the blade was never hardened properly and it's too soft. If, on the other hand, I immediately hear a crack or a chip, then either the blade was not tempered properly or it had large grain size. So what I'm gonna do now with this knife is something we don't often do, is I'm actually gonna chip it on purpose. So bear with me here, I'm gonna have to put quite a bit of pressure Flexing, flexing, I heard a little crack. Okay, and there's a chip. Okay, I'm gonna try that one more time since I'm gonna have to regrind it anyway. A tremendous amount of flex before I hear something crack and chip. Okay, so we can learn quite a bit from the actual chip itself. First of all, we see that these two chips are perfectly half moon shaped. That's great. An odd shaped chip or a like a quarter moon is, is usually going to indicate that there's something abnormal about the metallurgy of the blade. But a perfectly half moon shape is a good symbol. I also, in the light, I can see that around where the blade chipped, the steel is slightly deflected. So it's like the steel, it, it got flexed, 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 flexed past the point where it couldn't withstand it anymore and it chipped out, but part of the steel around it stayed flexed. 
So that means we have the perfect combination of hardness in this steel and toughness and flexibility. And then the last thing I can do is and normally I'm going to go out into the sunshine and I'm going to look straight down into one of those uh, chipped portions and you know even using a magnifying glass if I need to and I'm going to see do I just see kind of like a dull matte gray surface or do I see something that's really beady and really granular. Now without comparing large grain fractured surface with really refined grain fractured surface it's hard to to tell as a beginner but you know, if you saw enough pieces of uh, chipped or fractured steel, you would know that sometimes it has a really fine, dull gray matte color versus very granular, like almost like uh, grains of sand. So, why blades chip? Is it uh, because the steel has overheated sometime during the process, which would be a fault or a problem with the knife? Uh, was the blade forged, annealed, and quenched properly, but just not tempered enough? And the remedy might be to, uh, you know, somehow protect the handle and uh, get a little bit of heat on that blade to the proper tempering temperature, you know, something that your local bladesmith might be able to help you with. Or did you simply overburden the thin geometry of the blade, such as what I just did with my Zippo lighter? So the reason why this is really pertinent is we recommend wholeheartedly that our followers and our customers get into the practice of sharpening their knives by hand with stones, especially thinning down the secondary edge geometry, which is what really allows you to do some amazing things, whether it's cutting through acorn squash or magazines or leather or rubber or whatnot. It just will cut through things better, even of course your apples and your carrots. And then when you do thin down a great blade, you then have to be very careful to monitor what's going on in the edge because you don't want to get into a point where you've spent hours thinning your blade down and then go chopping a, a young coconut and then end up with chips all along the, along the blade. If you're in the practice of thinning your blade down, as you're using your blade, carefully monitor what is happening to your primary edge so that if you start to see any signs of failure, you can arrest it right away and correct the problem. So I'm Murray Carter, and that is a recount of Why Blades Chip. Keep going. You're angry at the bushes, Doug.